In this video lesson, we are going to look at the wave model of light. The goal for this lesson is to be able to describe and define the parts of a wave. Previous, previously in this unit, we've looked at how light travels as a ray. So light travels in a straight line. It's a form of energy and it can change directions, either being reflected or refracted. Light can also be absorbed by different substances. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at how light can also travel like a wave. So when we think of waves, we think of ocean waves. And we are going to do a lot of comparisons of light to ocean waves. In the wave model of light, we notice that light is also a form of energy and can change directions or be absorbed. However, the differences are that light, instead of traveling in a straight line, travels like an ocean wave with a cycl cyclical motion of up and down repetitiveness. It also travels out in every direction. So if you think of a pebble being thrown into the water, you'll notice that the ripples go out in every direction outwards, and light will do the same thing. Lastly, the wave model of light allows us to understand colors. To understand uh, how wave or how light moves as a wave, we need to know the properties of a wave. For this, there are a couple key points. We have the uppermost point of the wave, which is called the crest. We also have, with every wave, a lower point, which is called the trough. When one wave uh, is complete, we can measure the distance as the wavelength. So the wavelength here is the distance from the, the crest of one wave to the crest of the next. So we can measure it here from the crest of one wave to the crest of the next. On the example, we also have a red line showing that you can measure it from the trough of one wave to the trough of the next. As long as you have one full crest and one full trough, you have one wave. So you can measure it from whichever point you'd like. However, you must measure until that same exact point on the next wave to find the wavelength. Lastly, we have the amplitude, which, let's just erase a little bit there. The amplitude measures the height of the wave. So we have a, what we call a midline here. This cuts through the middle of the wave, keeping an equal amount of the wave above in the crest and an equal amount below in the trough. So what we do is we measure from the midline to the uppermost point of the crest, or we measure from the midline to the lowest point of the trough. That height gives us the amplitude, and the amplitude explains energy. So the higher the amplitude, the more energy there is. The lower the amplitude, the less energy there is. Looking here, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the wavelengths and amplitudes of different waves. So what we have here is we have, in this first graph, uh, three different waves. We notice that if we start at the, tro or the crest of the one wave to the crest of the next, it's more or less 0 0.8 microns for the red wave. For the green wave, if we start at the crest and go to the next crest measuring one wavelength, we're more or less at 0 0.6 microns. And for the last one, for the blue wave, if we start at the crest and go to the next, it's more or less 0 0.4 microns. What you notice is as we go from the red wave to the green wave to the blue wave, the wavelengths get shorter. So in other words, the distance between each wave gets shorter. Looking at the other graph here, we're going to measure the amplitude. So from this midline position here, we're going to compare the amplitudes. Along the, the y-axis, you'll notice we have each box is representing one, say, meter. Okay. So in the first wave here, we have an amplitude of one meter. In the second wave, we have an amplitude of one, two, three meters. And on the third wave, we have an amplitude of one meter. Of these, the one with the most energy is going to be the second wave, which has an amplitude of three meters. 
The next thing that's very important is to know how to measure the frequency of the waves. We need to be able to do this to compare the different waves on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the next lesson. Uh, the frequency is the number of times that a medium vibrates, so water, light, or sound, in a given amount of time. To measure frequency, we can use the following equation. Frequency is, whoops, let's just erase that here. Frequency is the number of waves that happen in a given amount of time. So we can take the number of waves or the number of cycles divided by the time or the period that it takes for that to occur. The unit for frequency is one or is hertz. It's represented by the Hz. One hertz is equal to one cycle or one wave per second. Doing a couple of examples, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at frequency calculations. So in grade 8, it's fairly simple. We just need to be able to um, calculate simply the number, uh, the frequency. So we have the girl is on a swing that completes 20 cycles in 25 seconds. What is the frequency of the swing? So to find this, we have our frequency which is equal to the number of waves divided by the time. And I'm going to go down to the bottom here. So we take 20 waves or 20 cycles divided by 25 seconds, which gives us 0 0.8 hertz. In the second one, we have a similar idea. We have a clock that ticks 88 times in 22 seconds. What is the frequency of the clock? The frequency is going to be 88 times divided by 22 seconds, which gives us 4 hertz. This is all you need to be able to do at grade 8 level for calculating frequency. Now, I mentioned earlier that the wave model of light allows us to explain colors. And what we're looking at here is we're looking at a picture of a prism. We have white light entering the prism and being split into the different colors of the rainbow red, yellow, orange, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The key point here is that each of those colors has a different wavelength. So the wavelengths get diffracted at a different angle. The longer the wavelength, so red light at the top, the less angle of, of diffraction that there is. And the shorter the wavelength, the more diffraction there is. Which means that overall, throughout the prism, the purple light gets diffracted more than the red. And through, through prisms or through water droplets, uh, this is what allows us to see the different colors of visible light. So that is the end of the lesson. Um, in class, I handed out a worksheet on measuring wavelengths, amplitudes, and frequency. So uh, you need to finish that. And if you finish that and you'd like a challenge question, uh, the challenge for today is using your knowledge of wavelengths and color, try to explain why the sky is blue.